Basically, using Camel. Uh, they run on top of their cloud, basically like Amazon EC2 and other clouds. Well, these applications don't run on top of Linux, they don't run on top of Windows, and so they run on top of the hypervisor directly. Uh, we have a Camel network drivers, a Camel storage drivers, a Camel TCP IP stack, we have a Camel web servers. The whole thing is Camel. It's, uh, it's beautiful. And uh, you should try it, it's good. So, uh, in this talk, I'll describe a bit about uh, who we are, why we're doing this, uh, where we're using this technique, uh, sort of our performance results. And I'll focus some thoughts. Okay, so people, so, um, yeah, I work with Citrix. Uh, it's got, and my, my goal really is to make sure that Citrix's products are more robust and faster, and I think this approach would be very useful for that. Um, and of course, we have also in the room, we have uh, Richard Mortier over there, uh, who does support in Nottingham, this is a good research project there. And Anil needs an introduction. And lots of other people work on this. Before he was famous for OPAN, Tom Marcassinier worked on this. <laughs> uh, and also Harris and Raphael and Balmarsh, lots of people work on this, it's very good. So, you know, why are we doing this? And I guess the real reason is because we love a handle, we want to see a handle code everywhere. But if my boss asked me, why are you doing this? Then I'll have to give him a more nuanced answer. So, uh, I would say something like, you know, the modern software stack is very big and complicated. It's very mature, and uh, you know, it's, all, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's got lots of nice abstractions, which made more sense in the past. And I think these days, some of the abstractions are a bit outdated. And it's actually quite difficult to make high performance and portable code. Like if you're, for example, trying to do a file copying a program and you do it naively with a regular sort of Unix APIs, your performance won't be great. You will pollute your disk caches. Your system performance will drop. Uh, then you think, well, I'll try and use ODirect instead, bypass the disk caches in Linux. And then suddenly you've got to page line your buffers and you've got to worry about central line reading rights. And you think, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could do something asynchronous stuff? And you think, well, I use libao. And then the uh, level of pain just rises to the top and it becomes a horrific, horrible thing. So uh, yeah, it must be a better way, really. Uh, the other thing is that uh, yeah, OS is a very good uh, handling of multi-user, multi-process environments, uh, very flexible, but it's also you know, difficult to look after. And if you deploy your application from Linux to the cloud, you better have good discipline skills to look after it. Otherwise, you know, if you don't patch it properly, then in a few days, it's game over. So uh, yeah, it must be a better way. And uh, I think the camel is part of the answer. And uh, Mirage is uh, what we're using. It's a set of, of libraries and tools for, uh, for building applications that run on the cloud. So people sometimes say things like the cloud is the computer. Uh, it's a bit cheesy, but it kind of is true in that uh, you don't really need to uh, worry about complicated different types of hardware now. You can just use the, the simple virtual hardware interfaces that hypervisors provide. So the Zen hypervisor has a virtual uh, network card, and so it's VMware, so it's KVM, and you need to support two or three of those, and you're basically then fully portable. So we've got uh, you know, blocks and network drivers. And then uh, in Mirage, we have a lot of protocol libraries for things like you know, TCP IP, HTTP, DNS, SSH, FAT32, OpenFlow, lots of things. And these are all standalone libraries that you can use for a project. It doesn't have to run uh, in this way, but it can run this way. And that's really cool. And uh, yeah, we use, uh, we like ML module system. We like uh, you know, module signatures and functions. And we, like, we don't mind recompiling things when APIs change. We don't have any ABIs to worry about particularly. Apart from the most high price level. And uh, yeah, and a Mirage uh, application really is a single purpose, optimized, static linked thing, uh, which uh, we now build in OPAN. And uh, we link only what we need, and all the configuration is built into it, and then we just send it off and deploy it. So I'll show a few examples of where we're currently using this. So one is there's a special service that runs on every Zen host. Uh, it's, a, it's a critical service, it's called Zen Store, and it's the means by which untrusted VMs connect to trusted system services in a sort of a secure way, uh, an access control way. And this thing, the original version of Tensor was written C, it was a bit of a mess, it was quite slow, and then uh, Thomas came along and wrote a nice camera version, it was all very nice and much faster and lovely. And then uh, recently to make this work in a Mirage environment, to make it work in kernel space, I just took the code, uh, removed the Unix dependencies to, to the bottom, and it's functionalized in the business logic, and then added a bit of a Mirage glue, and then now it compiles fine, and you can run it either as a kernel, or you can run it in user space as normal, and it's all, all, it's all brilliant. So this, this is something that uh, I'm quite keen to use more in the you know, future Zen systems. Another example is, say someone, I say you decide to uh, volunteer to talk from D and you want to write some slides, so obviously the thing you do is you uh, write your slides in a panel, and you, uh, you, get, you nick someone else's style sheets, and uh, you link it all up with the web server, you link it with the Mirage network stack, you link it with the Zen 
fibers. Uh, he's a regular camel tool chain, of course. Um, some might call this shaving a yak, I think. But <laughs> you, link, you link it all together as a, as a big Zen kernel, and then you either run it on your laptop, like I'm here, or you run it on the cloud, and we have some money or something. And uh, yeah, this is all fine. And this, this presentation is being served from a web server running the virtual machine. The, the TCP IP stack is all in the camel stack. It's all working, all working nicely. All fine. So um, the next thing I'll talk about is performance. So you know, how well does it really work? So I've got a block benchmark. So this was using a very fast PCI Express SSD device. And I, the top two lines are showing, that this graph shows we see a random loop through it. Uh, the top two lines, one is the Mirage case, and one is uh, a Linux case using direct I.O. And you can see that they're pretty much the same. There's, there's a, yeah, they're, they're both high, both high performance. They, they basically saturate the card at about uh, 1.4 gigabytes per second. That's what I expected. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, Mirage is relatively good at, you know, relatively okay at doing uh, I.O. And uh, just for interest, I accidentally turned off direct I.O. by mistake when I was configuring the Linux benchmark and the performance dropped massively to around 300, just showing you how uh, tricky it can be to get good performance out of uh, the sort of legacy stack. And actually, but because cache is getting in the way and also the place gets in the way, whereas with the Mirage stuff, we don't have such things, you need them to be sort of nice and raw so you just get good performance. That's the storage stack. I also have a nice some networking results. So we have a, a nice DNS server. So we have the DNS, very critical internet service. And we have a bunch of implementations, including some Mirage games. And uh, the takeaway from this graph is that the, uh, the Mirage one was the fastest, uh, highest throughput, the biggest bar. And uh, another interesting thing from this graph is that uh, the performance of the Mirage one is actually 50% of it is due to a single optimization, which I think was about 10 or 20 lines of code, just to do a bit of memoization. And that, and that was just really uh, easy to do, I believe, in the yeah. environment. We, we just use a weak hash table to memoize the packets going up, and we just serve the same bits, so we don't marshal all the time. Yeah. So that's the uh, memo, and no memo is doing it every time. So the form is like busting up with this uh, optimization, and uh, yeah, so the Mirage one comfortably uh, beats a uh, bind the sort of reference implementation. Bind OT isn't meant to be that, isn't, it isn't probably that fast, but NSD is probably quite fast, and uh, Mirage beats that. Uh, Interesting though, we, we, well, we tried to uh, put NSD also in kernel space uh, to make another comparison, but uh, it's obviously a bit more sensitive to the environment's one than and perhaps it needs a faster malloc than we happen to have, and the form has to drop when we move NSD into kernel space. And uh, so sort of in the kernel case, you move the entire garbage structure into kernel space, it's all exactly the same as it be in that uh, user space. It's, yeah, you can't want to pick that. So, uh, one of the things I mentioned was that these are statically linked binaries. So, one of the questions is how big are they? If you link everything in. So, I've got some numbers for a bunch of apps. I've got a, a DNS uh, server, or a web server. Uh, I've got an Ethernet learning switch that supports the OpenFlow protocol and uh, an OpenFlow controller. And if you just uh, build the bindings as normal and then you bees it to them, that's basically because the bindings are full of zeros uh, because of the way they're laid out. You really want to uh, remove that effect. And the standard Linux is to it to a kernel. So you do that, and then the uh, bindings drop to uh, you know, 390 up to 674k, not very big. But then if you uh, build that in bytecode and use a camel clean to do some uh, dead code animation, then actually the binding size has dropped loads down to uh, you know, 168k or 184k, so really tiny. So you can put <coughs> these things off floppies if you want to. You can have several other floppies <laughs> if you start in floppies. Yeah, so the, uh, yeah, the binding size is uh, it's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, building, I guess. Have to say a bit about building. So of course, I'm sure in the bricks you've already installed the pan, so it's a bit pointless to keep measuring on the slide. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, first thing is uh, get yourself a real pan. Perhaps maybe not use the master, maybe I should put a release in here, but never mind. Um, but once you've done that, you can uh, you can pan switch to the uh, slightly patched 3.12.1 of panel compiler, uh, which has uh, a few things removed because they don't quite work in our, in our limited environment. And uh, then you use the OPAN yes to install a bunch of libraries. And then a few minutes later, you're ready just to uh, you know, use ways and panel build, etc., just to build up your uh, Mirage kernel. Easy peasy. So the really summary is that, that yeah, I, I say that yeah, building apps in Mirage is really fun, and uh, yeah, it's quite, it's quite liberating really when you, uh, when you see the whole thing. You can see in the camera with a small amount of C in the bottom, and you can just trace find the whole lot and you can use these other things. And uh, yeah, even there was, a, there was a slightly nasty TCP stack oh, last weekend, and I was trying to make these slides, and uh, <laughs> and I didn't talk about it. And uh, yeah, even that was kind of fun to find. 
and there were no set faults or weird crashes. It was all just like, just keep having fun. And uh, yeah, it makes kernel programming less of a black art because uh, it's toxic programming. It's you know, not, not specified really. You can use a camel anywhere. And uh, yeah, you can also if you use these Mirage libraries, you can use the same source uh, Toronto to Unix process quite easily. And soon there'll be support for running as a free BSD kernel module. And for the Zen case, uh, fully virtualized boot coming soon, currently with some power virtualized guests, but we'll make that more flexible. And I was saying that yes, OPAN takes the misery out of using a patch compiler. You know, you don't need to worry about that anymore, it's uh, talking about a solved problem. And uh, I also thought it was quite good, but it didn't sense to work to be uh, explicit about the interface because the apps, the app needed. Uh, Unix was kind of threaded through there in a slightly undisciplined way, and it was quite nice to sort of pull that out. And then I was able to learn, you know, do a bit more testing of this thing or something. Yeah, it was a bit more abstract, and I was able to make it use it some mocks and things. I think, yeah, the margin was good. And uh, yeah, definitely sure try it. <laughs>